Oh, what a shot. Novak this, Novak that. But how can you and I actually play tennis like Novak? Today, we'll be providing expert analysis in the form of a step-by-step, -step, easy to follow along, practical guide that'll have you playing like Novak quicker than it takes to save Wimbledon. From his forehand to his backhand, as well as some bits and bobs that you may have never seen before. Here's how to play tennis like Novak Djokovic. You all better sit tight and get ready because this is going to be a good one. But first, quiz time. At what age did Novak Djokovic first hold a tennis racket? Was it A. 1 B. 3 C. 11 D. 4 And as always, if this video serves up some tennis joy, bolly that like button and backhand a subscribe for more ace-worthy tennis content like this. <laughs> Oui, d'autant que Sabine Niziki est en train de se poser. Djokovic's forehand. Novak Djokovic's forehand is a key element in his arsenal, making him one of the best tennis players in the world. Let's break down his technique and see how you can apply it to your game. Early preparation. Novak's forehand begins with early preparation. He keeps his head in the same position, facing the net throughout the stroke. This stability is crucial for accuracy. For you. Try maintaining a steady head position from the start of your swing until after hitting the ball. It's vital. It helps in focusing and hitting accurately. Next up, body movement and preparation. Another key aspect of Djokovic's forehand is preparation while moving. He starts preparing for his shot as he moves towards the ball, ensuring he's ready as the ball bounces on his side. This preparation influences the contact point. To use this in your play, start your racket preparation early as you move towards the ball aiming to be set up by the time the ball reaches your side. Then let's talk shoulder rotation and arm position. Djokovic's shoulder rotation is complete when his right arm is behind his shoulder. His elbow is bent at a 90 degree angle and his left shoulder arms at the ball. Emulate this by rotating your shoulders fully during your swing and maintaining an appropriate elbow bend. This will add power and control to your forehand. So far, we've covered the importance of steady head positioning, early body preparation while moving, and shoulder rotation with correct arm positioning. These are the foundations of Djokovic's powerful forehand. If you have any questions or things that you want clarified, please comment. With that being said, this next one is interesting. But before moving any further, I hope you haven't forgotten about our trivia question. Make sure to keep watching. The answer will be revealed at the end. And hint, the answer is not A. 1. Grip and racket positioning. Djokovic's grip is unique and extreme. His racket face initially points towards the back fence. This grip style might feel unusual, but it's effective for power and spin. Experiment with your grip, adjusting it towards this position. Use your elbow to turn the racket face towards the ball, as Novak does, for better control. Who would have thought? Anyway, next we have the whip effect. The whip effect is another distinctive feature of Djokovic's forehand. His hand moves towards the ball with a loose wrist, allowing the racket head to lag and then catch up quickly. This creates a significant impact. To replicate this, focus on keeping your wrist flexible and allowing a delay in the racket head's movement, which increases power and spin, contact point and body alignment. Djokovic's contact point is around 30 to 40 centimeters in front of his body, with the racket head angled at 30 degrees to the ground. It's perfect. This angle helps in applying spin. In your game, aim to make contact with the ball in front of your body and adjust the racket angle to enhance your spin. Even if you jump slightly during the shot, maintain balance. We've also just looked at Novak's unique grip, the whip effect in his swing, and the importance of the contact point and body alignment. These elements are crucial for adding power and spin to your forehand. Don't feel overwhelmed and try doing all these things at once. Just pick one or two and practice. Once you've got the hang of it, try practicing the next two. You've got this. Footwork and weight transfer. Djokovic's footwork is impressive. The space between his feet, about half a meter, allows for quick movement after the shot. Good footwork helps in setting up the shot and moving swiftly afterwards. He transfers his body weight from the back to front as he makes contact with the ball, adding power to his shots. Racket path. The path of Novak's racket head is intriguing. It goes around the ball, brushing it from the outside. This movement adds control and spin. Practice a similar racket head path, focusing on brushing the ball for more spin and control. It's quite interesting, don't you think? Adapting to personal style. While Novak's arm is slightly bent due to his grip, ideally, a straight arm is preferred for maximum power. Adapt this element according to your comfort and playing style. Before moving on to our next section rating Novak's backhand, 
we have to talk about his mental toughness, a critical and commonly overlooked aspect of tennis. This could honestly be the difference between a Wimbledon winner and a straight-up nobody. No matter how good you are at the game, if you cannot handle pressure, you have no longevity and no real shot at rising to the top. That being said, what are his secrets? Well, Novak Djokovic's mental strength on the court is a result of specific techniques and practices. He focuses on conscious breathing to handle tension during matches, allowing him to quickly recover from negative emotions. You should probably be writing this down in your notes somewhere. Mindfulness practices, including meditation and journaling, are also key components of his mental preparation. In high-pressure moments, Djokovic uses positive affirmations and focuses on breathing to stay present and execute strategic shots. Oh, he's made it as well! Joker's backhand. Now I'll be analyzing Novak Djokovic's backhand, revealing a multifaceted skill set that goes beyond the simplistic view of just a good or bad shot. This breakdown of Djokovic's backhand will examine different aspects, rating them on a scale of 1 to 10, providing a comprehensive understanding of his strengths and areas for improvement. With me so far? Great. First up, I rate his ability to change direction a 10 out of 10. Djokovic's backhand is incredibly versatile in changing direction. He comfortably directs the ball cross-court and down the line, making this decision on any type of ball. This adaptability is a significant advantage, allowing him to put opponents on the run and control the game's rhythm. I rate his accuracy a 9 out of 10. Precision is a hallmark of Djokovic's backhand. He plays deep, consistently hitting near the sidelines. This accuracy keeps opponents constantly on the defensive and contributes significantly to his overall game strategy. Not bad, not bad at all. Then I'll have to rate his change of pace an 8 out of 10. Djokovic can effectively slice his backhand and play higher, slower paced shots, but his preference for rhythm and consistent pace limits his rating in this area. He thrives in a game with uniform pace, but shows slightly less dominance when the rhythm is disrupted. Quite good, but could use some improvement. Next, counterpunching. I rate this a 10 out of 10. One of Djokovic's strongest aspects is his counterpunching ability. His backhand excels under fast-paced conditions thanks to his early preparation and flexible wrists. This skill allows him to convert the speed of his opponent's shots into his own, creating a formidable, almost deadly response. His heaviness, in my opinion, is a 6 out of 10. The backhand's relative weakness lies in its flatness. The lack of heavy spin makes the ball more comfortable for opponents to return. Hitting partners and opponents alike find his backhand more manageable to handle, primarily due to its lesser spin. Passing shots and lob, I rate him a 7 out of 10. Djokovic has a strong backhand passing shot thanks to his accuracy and touch, yet he is not as aggressively offensive with these shots as some other players, which slightly lowers his rating in this area. Overall, Novak Djokovic scores an 85 out of 100 on his backhand. This high score reflects the shot's effectiveness in various situations, though not necessarily in all aspects of the game. This nuanced analysis shows why categorizing a shot as simply good or bad doesn't quite work in this sport. In this analysis, we've explored the key elements of Novak Djokovic's forehand and backhand, early preparation, body movement and preparation while moving, shoulder rotation, unique grip, the whip effect, optimal contact point, body balance, efficient footwork, and so on. With regular practice, these tips can help you develop a powerful and effective forehand, enhancing your tennis skills. Oh, and don't forget to implement his mental toughness techniques and take this one step at a time. Now let's circle back to our trivia question. At what age did Novak Djokovic first hold a tennis racket? Well, here's the answer. Age four. Djokovic first gripped a tennis racket at the age of four when his dad gave him his first tennis racket. This early start in tennis was important because it helped him develop his skills from a young age. When he returned to Serbia in September after winning the US Open, 20,000 fans greeted him. He was overcome by it all. His talent and love for the game were clear even then. This early start set the foundation for his future success in tennis. Take a peek at our other videos. And that, my friends, is game, set, and match for this episode of Glam Slam Tennis. Thanks for watching.